you remember the first time someone paid you to write? Oh God, yeah. I, my very first uh, um, paid assignment was an episode of Saved by the Bell, the the, uh, the Saturday morning TV show. And it's a funny story because um, the show had, I think it was like its second season. It was a long time, right when I first started writing. And um, I remember my, my agent uh, said, well, there's this show, it's a Saturday morning kids show. It's a live action show um, that, you know, they, they need writers. They like to write writing samples. Um, you, know, you want to go in and pitch? And I go, well, why are you sending me there? I want to write, you know, whatever it was back there, Cheers or Murphy Brown or what, I want to write one of those. He goes, just go, you know, just go. It'll be fun and, and they'll probably hire you, whatever. So I go in, I pitched a ton of stories. They picked one, they liked it and they shot and they shot it and it was a nice experience. Well, on, on the, aside from just first getting my, getting my first credit and, and all of that, that episode has rerun 50,000 times on one platform or another. Uh, the, the show became very successful. It became like this iconic show of, of its period. It went on to DVD and you know, so the, the episode is on all the DVDs. And to this day, I can, ha I, I can write something that, that was really successful and the, and the one thing somebody will say to me when I tell them I wrote Saved by the Bell, I love that show. I remember your episode. Oh my God, wait till I tell so-and-so that you wrote that episode of Saved by the Bell. You know, it's just, it's really funny. So it turned out to be a great first assignment, you know, that little did I know. But that was the first time I was actually paid as a screenwriter. And which episode was it? I wrote an episode called Save the Max, which was about the kids uh, unearth the old high school radio station that they find in a basement or something and they use it to create a telethon, kind of radiothon to save their, their diner, the Max, which is going to close because they're going out of business or something. Um, and uh, yeah, and that was it. And, and, uh, and it's just funny because people just, they know it and they remember it. It's like culty almost, you know. So, so, I, so I just say, if it makes sense, take the job because you never know what's going to come of it. Right. And so going back to that first time, you know, knowing that you did get the job, what was going through your head like the night of? The night you, of? Yeah, when you found when I found When I found out that I got the job? Right, right. Oh, it was, it was huge because, um, you know, I had just started writing and, and I had been working a lot writing spec scripts and going on meetings and things like that. And, and I had, the job I had had, I, I was doing pretty well in it and, and, and I just kind of figured when I left that job, oh, well, you know, I've gotten jobs. I, you know, it's not, it hasn't been that hard to find jobs. I'll, I'll do this and I'll get a job. You know, it just, I wasn't prepared for how difficult it was. And maybe if I was, I wouldn't have done it. So I just went in like, you know, optimistic and, and you know, full steam ahead. Um, so to get my first writing job relatively soon after I, after I started, you know, left that other job and started writing, it felt like this is huge accomplishment and, uh, and it was fun. And I, I, I didn't write a second episode, any other episodes for them, but I did go up back in there and pitch a few times and, and uh, yeah, it was, it was very exciting. But you know what, to this day, when somebody says yes to something, it's the greatest feeling, you know, it's just, it's so, it's such validation and, you know, you're just so proud of the fact that. You know, you really, you came up with an idea, somebody liked it, somebody's going to, you know, you, you're going to get to write it, you know, you're going to get to tell your story. You know, it's always exciting. When you left that other job, did you have a specific plan in place like, okay, I'm going to give myself this much time. If it doesn't work out, then here's plan B. Mm -hmm. well, what was your... I never had a plan B. I, I, the funny, funny family story, my sister, uh, after I left the job and you know, after you know, doing this for a few years and you know, it definitely had its ups and downs, she said to me, well, do you have a plan B? And I said, no, this is my plan B. I, my plan A was that other job, then that didn't work out for me. So this, my plan B actually became my plan A. So that's it. And I always, I just always stuck it out. I mean, you know, I, I, I always, you know, I loved writing. I, 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 was, I never got the don't quit your day job. I got enough work along the way to, to know I should keep doing it until things ultimately became more consistent. And I always did other writing work uh, to fill in in between, you know, whether it was journalism work or press kit writing or publicity writing or whatever. I was always writing something. So it, it, in between all the script writing, just to sort of keep going and to make money, um, but, um, you know, I just never gave up and, if, and I just always believed in, in the, the, the possibility of success, whatever level it was, you know, I mean, I think you have to manage your expectation in terms of where, what your place may be in the food chain. Um, but, uh, you know, I love writing. There's really not much else I'd, I'd want to do. I'd love to, you know, be a, a chef. I'd love to be a, a psychiatrist. I mean, a psychologist. I mean, I, there are lots of things I'm interested in. Um, but, you know, when it comes to, to, you know, to my passion, you know, it's really writing.